Czech Republic, a small country in Europe in which people were changing the landscape for centuries. An untouched wilderness has already disappeared from most regions. Despite that, many secretive wild animals survive in the cultural landscape without being noticed by humans. Snakes often inhabit abandoned areas very close to people. There are only five species in the Czech Republic, and yet they are an interesting part of the local fauna. What kind of life they live? Are there any areas in the country where they thrive? How are snakes influenced by human activities? And most importantly, do we need to fear them? Let's reveal the secrets of our snake neighbors and go through the experience of one year in their life from early spring to late autumn. Spring has come to Central Europe, and nature is awakening after a long winter. Czech Republic lies right in the heart of Europe. Even here, the snow has already melted. The sun is getting stronger, and first amphibians appear in the shallow ponds. One of the first ones to come out and breed are the moor frogs. Males turn bluish for a few days. As the temperature gets higher, more species become active. For example, the European tree frog, which is the smallest frog species in the Czech Republic. Each species makes a different distinctive sound. European toads don't have a strong call. Several males are trying to mate with one female. Only the strongest will succeed, and soon there will be many strings of eggs in the ponds. Spring arrived also into the higher elevations where fire salamanders come to the streams. These amphibians spend most of their time on land, but they need water for reproduction. They don't lay eggs as frogs do, but give birth to small larvae in the aquatic environment. We are now in the eastern part of Bohemia, in Hradec Králové, in close vicinity of the city, there is a natural monument called Naplachtje. A 
Exmoor ponies help to maintain the natural forest-free habitats suitable for rare species. In many ways, they resemble the now extinct wild horses that once played this role throughout Europe. After a long winter hibernation, a grass snake comes out close to grazing ponies. The most common snake in the country tries to slip unnoticed around hairy giants. Will it succeed? It will not. Ponies are curious, and the snake preventively plays dead. It is a defense strategy called thanatosis. Grass snake opens its mouth and shows its tongue. It also coils into a ball and rolls its belly up. To make it look more real, it also releases a very stinking secretion from the cloaca which deters most predators. But there is no danger coming from ponies. Soon, they lose their attention. The snake comes to life and quickly disappears from the scene. Only a few hundred meters away, another snake is crawling. It is the European adder. It differs from other Czech snake species by a dark zigzag line on the back. In this individual, the black line contrasts nicely with the light grey body. This coloration is typical for males. Females have a brown background coloration. The colour of snakes changes after they shed their skin. When the snake is just before shedding, the colours are not very bright. On the contrary, the freshly shed adder has a beautiful, vivid colour. Snake skin does not grow with the body, but becomes small several times per year. The solution is shedding. Snakes start from the head, where they tear all skin by rubbing against the surrounding objects. They even shed the transparent ocular scale that covers their eyes. Thus, snakes never blink, as they have fused eyelids. skin turns upside down, and the adder leaves it behind. Usually, snakes manage to shed their skin in one piece, but not always. It depends on the humidity and a suitable substrate. Na Plakke Natural Monument is an ideal location not only for reptiles, but also for amphibians. For example, the seasonal ponds and the sandy soil are suitable for rare common spadefoot toads. It is sometimes called a garlic frog, after a stinking skin secretion that it excretes in defence when threatened. Spadefoot toads are mainly active at night, and during the day they dig themselves into the soil. For that, they use hardened protrusions on the back of their feet.
After a moment of digging, the toad disappears into sandy substrate. Spadefoot toads also spend the winter buried up to two meters below the surface. Lastly, nature wakes up in the mountains. Adders are well adapted to the cold climate. The European adder is the only snake species in the world which has a range that extends also north of the Arctic Circle. In the Czech Republic, adders become active even in the first half of March, when snow is still melting in mountain regions. Because there are not enough warm places to incubate eggs at higher altitudes, adders give birth to live offspring. By the end of April, all snakes are active. But to what world do they wake up in after the winter? In most parts of the Czech Republic, there is a cultural landscape which people use intensively. The wild and untouched nature can hardly be found in this country. Do snakes have enough space in an environment altered by humans? And what do they really need for survival? A little and quiet area, like an abandoned orchard, overgrown edge of a meadow, or a forgotten wetland can be enough to sustain snake populations. A little variety between vast fields and spruce monocultures is needed. Even human activity is not a problem for snakes if it's done carefully. In fact, sometimes it is even beneficial. Podii National Park stretches along the valley of the River Die. The great diversity of species is not only near the water or in thermophilic oak forests, Many animals also like the Chaubez vineyard, where excellent wines are produced. Stone walls and sunny terraces combined with a nearby river are a snake's paradise. No wonder all four non-venomous species of snakes in the Czech Republic live here. The smooth snake is abundant here. Due to its secretive way of life, in many other places it escapes the attention of the public and even professionals. With a maximum body length of around 70 centimeters, the smooth snake is the smallest non-venomous snake Czech Republic. The average size of this species is quite similar to the average size of the European adder. The stone walls along the vineyard provide smooth snakes with great shelter and opportunities for hunting lizards. This small snake feeds almost exclusively on other reptiles. Podi National Park is famous mainly for the presence of another very rare snake which thrives here. The Escolapian snake is the longest snake of the Czech Republic and it can rarely measure over two meters. Spring is a period of blooming, high activity and breeding in nature. Breeding season starts also for the Escolapian snakes as they move from a wide area to Chaubez Vineyard where there are suitable places for mating and laying eggs. In particular, males migrate to a distance of up to three kilometers and are not stopped even by the river Die when looking for females.
When snakes are on the move, you can come across them almost anywhere, even on a tree. The Esculapian snake is good at climbing, but it is much more common to see it on the ground, in grass or in stony walls. Finally, another snake appears on the horizon. Is that a female willing to mate? Not yet. This is a rival that must be defeated first. If two Similarly sized males meet and there are females in the vicinity, a ritualized combat happens. The males wrap around each other, push each other, and try to press the rival's head to the ground. In Escalapian snakes, the fights tend to be calm, rather slow, and look very elegant almost like a dance. Therefore, they are often mistaken for mating. If the fight lasts a long time, and both males are similarly strong, they might rarely resort to biting. the fight follows the scent trail of the female. He soon finds her in a stone wall, where the mating itself often takes place. And sometimes there is unwanted company. Another snake pair has more peace in the oak forest. The female does not cooperate at first and tries to crawl away but the male holds her firmly with his jaws and touches her with his whole body. At the same time, he tries to start mating with her. Snakes have the same opening for excretion and reproduction, which is called the cloaca. During mating, the male pushes out both of his hemipenes, but he uses only one of them to mate with the female. The whole act lasts from 10 to 45 minutes, and then each snake goes its own way.
Artificial hatching places and shelters are located in the showbeds to support the population of Esculapian snakes. However, there are plenty of natural choices in this area suitable for incubating eggs. So the hatching places made by humans are mostly used by grass snakes and dice snakes. Just a short distance away, the European green lizards thrive on the sunny slopes of the valley. The largest lizard in the Czech Republic prefers warm and dry habitats. It lives mainly in the lowlands, and like the Escalapian snake, it is an iconic reptile of the Podi National Park. The distinctive blue throat of the males reveals that spring has already arrived for the lizards. Males are territorial. They guard the female and scare away the intruders. The larger male inflates himself and exposes the turquoise neck, believing it will persuade the female to mate. But she paddles with her front legs and shows her disinterest. Gentle persuasion does not work, and brute force comes into play. Female often tries to run away, but the male holds her firmly at the base of the tail. Mating itself takes only a few seconds and... It's all over. In the spring, it is also possible to see young Esculapian snakes around Chaubez vineyard. They hatched last year at the end of the summer and they have already survived their first winter. They are very good climbers, but like adults, they also spend a lot of time on the ground. Due to the distinctive yellow spots behind their heads, people often confuse them with the grass snake, which is much more common and well known. With increasing age, the yellow spot and a more visible pattern on the head and back disappear. In adulthood, only a slightly yellower shade on the neck is visible. Youngsters of other species are also active. Dry habitats are preferred by smooth snakes, which do not hatch from eggs. Females give birth to live young. Down in the valley, by the river Die, a young dye snake is warming itself on the rock. The water is still cold, and the snakes spend more time on the shore than later in the summer. But hunger forces them to enter the river, at least for a while. The young snakes catch aquatic invertebrates, 
and small fish. While the dice snakes are mainly living near the running water in the Czech Republic, the grass snake will be satisfied even with a small pond or swamp behind the village. Its favorite food are frogs. The marsh frogs are focusing on breeding and defending their territory, ignoring the coming danger. The fast grass snake uses the unawareness of one frog and holds it firmly by the leg in an instant. Prey tries to escape from the predator, which uses only its jaws and muscles on the body to hold the marsh frog firmly. Many thin, sharp teeth pointed backwards help the grass snake to keep its grip. However, it is safest to start swallowing straight away. It may seem cruel, but the snake can't do it better, and it needs food for survival. Thanks to the flexible jaws, which are not fused, snakes can open their mouth very wide and swallow surprisingly large prey. Swallowing is fast, and within a few minutes, the whole frog disappears in the narrow body of the snake, which will now spend a few days with hiding and digesting. Snakes have successfully inhabited many places in the immediate vicinity of people, even in big cities. The surroundings of the dam in Brno, the second biggest city of the Czech Republic, are a popular destination for tourists, cyclists and families with children. But a stable population of dye snakes settled under the dam on the Svratka River. Instead of classically reinforcing the banks with concrete, gabions were used here thanks to conservationists. This preserves the spaces between stones. Snakes use these crevices as shelters, places for laying eggs and hibernation. They can also bask comfortably on the surface. Dice snakes are hungry after a long hibernation and the low water level gives them hope for easy hunting. These water snakes eat almost exclusively fish when they are adults. This species hunts underwater, and it can stay under the surface for up to 15 minutes. But catching a slippery fish is not easy at all. When the hunter succeeds, the fish fights 
and tries to free itself from the deadly grip. The snake quickly pulls its prey ashore, where the fish has a clear disadvantage. But even here, the snake has not won yet. Strong perches often escape. But sometimes the hunter has more luck than brains. This time, the fish literally jumps back into the snake's mouth. There is nothing to wait for. Only the swallowed fish will not run away. Many people do not know that dye snakes have a diverinoids gland, a primitive venom gland that produces a neurotoxin that paralyzes fish. This venom is completely harmless to humans. Dye snakes often begin to eat before the fish stops moving. They are vulnerable during feeding and want to have everything finished quickly. The environment under the dam in Brno City is very dynamic, depending on the raising and lowering of the sluis gates. The water depth and the speed and force of the current change unpredictably. Snakes have adapted well and are successfully changing hunting strategies. While some lurk in the shallows and hunt common perch, common bleak, and exceptionally also the burbot, others actively hunt large vimbas in deep water. The prey is then quickly pulled ashore. Even here, it is necessary to be careful. Another hungry snake is interested in the fish caught by someone else. But there is enough food for everyone in the water. After a while, the second hunter is celebrating success. Swallowing such a large prey can take up to an hour and requires plenty of energy and patience. Fortunately for the dice snakes, the vimbas, unlike perch, do not fight at all. Finally, the huge fish is eaten, and the snake will now digest and enjoy a well-deserved rest. The surroundings of the Brno Dam seem to be a snake's paradise, but despite the fact that conservationists have provided ideal conditions for the rare urban population of dice snakes, the reptiles have an invisible enemy here. Kožní dermatomykoza, která byla poprvé popsaná vlastně v severní Americe u křestýšů a křestýšků, kdy tam vlastně způsobovala celé velké poklesy jako ohrožených populací těch křestýšků a bylo prováděno nějaké vzorkování ve Velké Británii, kdy se vlastně potvrdili, potvrdili nějaké pozitivní případy právě tohohle toho, téhleté houby, té askomice, té ofidomice Sofiodíkola, která vlastně je teda původcem tohoto, té dermatomykózy. A 
Na základě toho jsme potom začali si to vlastně všímat tady i my, nebo hlavně teda můj školitel, který vlastně našel vlastně jednou hada s, s nějakými typickými kožními lézemi, tak ho taky ovzorkoval, poslal ho teda do referenční laboratoře, kde vlastně jim vyšel jako pozitivní, takže to byl takový první záchyt tady vlastně u nás a ještě k tomu taky první záchyt pro kontinentální Evropu. Vydáváme zejména jakoby sezóně na jaře a na podzim výskyt těch, těch typických lézí u těch hadů, a vlastně potom později, už v té sezóně, někdy v létě, tak těch lézí potom ubývá na těch hadech. A já si myslím, že ty hadi se s tím tady u nás docela dobře vypořádávají, že vlastně dokážou potom nějakou zvýšenou frekvencí toho svlékání té pokožky vlastně se toho patogenu asi zbavit, dejme tomu. No. Otázkou je potom, jaký vliv zase mají nějaká hromadná hyberná kula nebo nějaké ty hromadné ukryty, vlastně, které oni využívají a tam asi nejspíš bude pře- jako docházet k přenosu té infekce mezi, mezi vlastně jedinci. While in the lowlands, the breeding season is over and most snakes are now concentrating on hunting food. At higher altitudes, everything takes place with a delay of up to several weeks. Grass snakes are about to mate in the Eagle Mountains. As soon as the snakes come out of the places where they hibernate during the winter and warm up a little, they shed their skin. However, some individuals have not yet managed to do so and immediately rush to reproduction. This is completely different from the Esculapian snakes. Several males are trying to mate with one large female. They compete with their tails and usually only the strongest and largest can mate. For others, it is an experience that they will use, for example, next year. Even during spring and summer, it is colder in the mountains and reptiles like to use shelters around the cottages, under which they can warm up. The slow worms are very similar to snakes, but in reality they are lizards without legs. Unlike snakes, they blink, but they stick out their forked tongue in the same way. Another reptile that can cope well with the colder climate is the viviparous lizard. Lizards and slow worms often share shelters with grass snakes, and it is no exception that several snakes and slow worms live together under one metal plate or discarded piece of linoleum. In the Czech Republic, the European adder lives mainly in the mountains, where it prefers moist meadows, boglands, heaths and grassy slopes, where it can bask. Adders also like to stay around mountain cottages, where they find suitable shelters and often enough rodents to hunt. But there is no need to be afraid of them. Appropriate prevention of the encounters with adders is to keep the surroundings of the cottage tidy and mow the grass often so it stays short. A bite from an adder can be unpleasant, but no fatalities have been reported in the last 20 years. If you come across an adder, it's a good idea to keep your distance. But if you accidentally get bitten, 
It's better to go to the hospital immediately. People meet adders most often in the summer, when tourists come to the mountains. However, such an encounter ends much more often in the death of a snake than in any danger for humans. The biggest threat for adders are clashes with cars and cyclists on the roads. In the mountains, it is also possible to come across a black-coloured adder. It is not a different species, but only a relatively rare melanistic coloration of the European adder. No zigzag line is visible on the back of these individuals, and people often have no idea that it is an adder. Melanism probably evolved as an adaptation to the mountain environment, where the black colour absorbs the heat from the sun more easily. Black coloration often manifests itself with increasing age, and some adders, which are as black as coal in adulthood, are born with a classic colour, but some individuals are already born black. Melanism occurs in both females and males. The smooth snake is also often synanthropic, which means that it lives close to humans. Thanks to the secretive way of life, the owners of the land do not even notice that they have a snake in the garden. And when they come across a smooth snake, they often confuse it with adder and are unnecessarily afraid of it. This species is completely harmless and can be easily distinguished from the adder by a typical horseshoe-shaped dark spot on the head. The pattern on the back is also different. A circular pupil, which is vertical in the European adder, can also help. In addition, these two species usually do not occur in the same localities, while the smooth snake prefers warm, sunny habitats at lower altitudes, adders thrive mostly in the mountains. It is quite rare to observe smooth snakes interacting with each other. While exploring the stone wall, a medium-sized smooth snake came across a similarly large individual of the same species hidden in a crevice. It shows interest and sniffs the other snake with its tongue. The second snake responds by waving its tail and going deeper into shelter. The encounter ends relatively quickly and both snakes continue on their way. With the autumn coming, the activity of reptiles decreases, but it is a good time for some conservation projects that can help snakes survive next season. A great example is the conservation program focused on the Esculapian snake. We are located in Po Orgi, in one of only four localities in the Czech Republic where this snake species occurs. Spolek Zamenis byl založen v roce 2006 a jeho náplní je ochrana užovky stromové zde v Pohoří. V současné době máme asi 30 členů a takovou hlavní naší náplní je tomu hadovi tady v té krajině pomáhat. Jednou z takových hlavních možností, jak mu pomoci, je budování líhnišť. Protože ten had je poměrně teplomilný, nebo spíš on sám jako není až tak teplomilný, ale teplo potřebuje jeho vajíčka, která mají poměrně dlouhou inkubaci, je to 2 až 2,5 měsíce, kdy v podstatě leží v nějakém tom substrátu, který produkuje teplo. A pokud to teplo není dostatečné, tak vlastně dojde k tomu, že ty vajíčka se nedolíhnou. Což se u takových těch populací, těch izolovaných a poměrně na severu, hodně často stává. 
Tak v současné době uh, ta populace užovky stromové v Ohří čítá zhruba 500 až 600 zvířat, což není nějak závratně mnoho, ale zase to není až tak kriticky málo. Takže ta naše činnost se soustředí hlavně jakoby na ten terén, nemusíme ty hady nějak jako složitě odchát a vypouštět uh, v nějakých jakoby, náhradních uh, prostředích. Uh, Tech líhníž, co jsme postavili, je v současné době asi 30. Jsou to takové uh, malé ohrádky, zhruba 2x2 metry, oplocené a vyplněné substrátem, který produkuje teplo, což my hodně používáme piliny, borku, hnůj, slámu nebo vlastně jejich různé směsi. A princip je v tom, že ty hadi se páří zhruba někdy v květnu, počátkem července nebo ještě někdy koncem června, když to vyjde, tak kladou vajíčka a ty vajíčka potom v tom kompostu leží těch 2 až 2,5 měsíce a zhruba od konce srpna po celé září se líhnou mláďata. No a my většinou tady v říjnu, aby jsme jim dali dostatečný prostor na to vylíhnutí, se do těch líhní škoukáme, přehrabujeme ten materiál a snažíme se najít vaječné slupky, který nám vlastně doloží, že tam došlo k úspěšné reprodukci a víme přesně, jakoby v jaké množství, i jaké druhy se tam, většinou i užovka obojková se tam líhne. Takže máme poměrně přesné informace o tom, jak je ten záchranný program úspěšný. Každoročně nalezneme několik set vajíček. Ta největší úroda to bylo před loni a našli jsme celkem asi 400 vajíček jenom od té užovky stromové, ty užovky obojkové, jakoby jsou ještě navíc. Tak jedním z takových velmi důležitých aspektů toho záchranného programu je v podstatě osvěta mezi místními obyvateli, vlastně majiteli pozemku, protože v podstatě na nich jak si by i pracujeme, protože ty líhniště mnohdy právě leží jak se v prostorách, které jsou třeba soukromí a tak dále. A tahle ta lokalita má i takový zajímavý fenomén, že místní obyvatelé tuhle z toho velmi dobře znají pod pojmem Esculap a dokonce někteří ho buď intenzivně chrání, nebo minimálně tolerují. Takže to nám tak trošku usnadňuje i tu práci v tom terénu, protože pokud se podíváme na třeba jiné lokality, tak tam jako už ta, ten vztah k těm hadům není až tak jako příznivý, nicméně jsme rádi, že v téhle té lokalitě to takhle funguje a naší vlastně hlavní, nebo jednou z hlavních činností je právě ta osvěta, ale mezi i obyvateli, kteří tady přímo nežijí. V současné době, jak si, nebo v minulosti jsme zbudovali tedy přímo vlastně v centru výskytu užovky stromové infocentrum, které přímo slouží k tomu, aby tedy jak si příchozivší turisté a vůbec návštěvníci získali jak si nějaké informace o tomhle tom našem největším a nejzácnějším hadu a samozřejmě i o dalších, protože budovali jsme také zároveň venkovní expozice našich hadů, takže si tady můžou prohlídnout všech pět druhů našich hadů, kteří u nás tedy žijí. Relatively unusual management takes place in November in the area of the natural monument of Naplachtě in Hradec Králové. Snakes and amphibians are already hibernating. Meanwhile, tanks and armored fighting vehicles driven by private owners are driving around the site. It is a beneficial activity, carefully led by local scientists and conservationists. They determine which places tanks may enter and where, on the contrary, they could put hibernating reptiles and amphibians in danger. Heavy machines create new ponds, deepen some older ones and prevent spreading of trees, so the area still remains open. The site used to be a military training ground and it was the regular movement of military equipment that led to the development of rare early succession habitats. This non-traditional care takes place here every year, if possible, and is one of the main reasons why so many species of endangered animals and plants thrive in this natural monument. Next spring, after a long winter, snakes will wake up from hibernation again into the diverse mosaic of the European cultural landscape. The whole story will start from the beginning, just like every year. 
all five species of snakes living in the Czech Republic are protected by law. Nevertheless, society has only a limited awareness of these reptiles, and they mostly trigger hate, fear, and other negative emotions in people. But do snakes deserve a bad reputation? The key to throw away prejudices and unnecessary fears is a better understanding of the life of these fascinating creatures. People's attitudes towards snakes is slowly changing in a positive way with the help of passionate experts and conservationists. Snakes will hopefully continue to be an interesting part of our nature, not only in national parks, but also in cities, orchards, gardens, in our immediate vicinity. It is up to us to let them live nearby. They don't need much, and if we approach them with respect, snakes in the Czech Republic can easily share the living space with people. Thank you.